My name is Chris Kayas, and I am the chairman of the River Road Committee. And I, at this time, at 137, I'm calling this uh, River Road Committee uh, meeting Thursday, July 8, 2021, uh, to order. I'll, I'll bug out. Mr. Berman. Well, I got another one at three, so. <laughs> so. so uh, where are you? Oh, you can call me when you're here, OK? Oh. Good afternoon, Mr. Caius. This is Scott Berger. I've got my colleagues, Chris Dahl okay. and Tracy Glassford here as well. Okay, great. We're uh, ready to support you during the meeting, so. All right, uh, I think I'm ready. We're waiting for Mr. Berman here to clear. Yes, then we can have a uh, roll call, I guess. Chris Dahl, can you conduct a roll call, please? Mr. Dahl. I will, thank you. Caius? Present. Berman? Here. Ford? Present. Leonard? Leonard here. Strathman. Strathman here. Okay, thank you. Well, we have a quorum and uh, everybody's here. Um, the, uh, can I have a motion to approve the minutes for the May 19th, 2021 Riverboat Committee? Leonard moves. For, Ford move, Leonard second. Any discussion, any changes? Hearing none, okay, roll call please. Caius? Caius, yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Okay, minutes are approved. Then I will turn it over to Mr. Berger, Scott Berger, to for a review of the fiscal year 2022 departmental applications. Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I will share my screen with you um, at this time and uh, hope that you can all see uh, some materials that we have shared with you previously. Um, at the moment, you should be looking at the cover sheet of the internal applications for fiscal year 2022. Um, the purpose of our, our meeting with you today is to really give you a briefing on explaining, you know, the substance of the 2022 budget development process. And one of the key elements of that is obviously um, uh, decisions from this committee regarding how you want to recommend funding for internal projects in the new fiscal year starting December 1st. Uh, the lion's share of the riverboat funds have historically been used by county departments um, to support various projects that address one or more of the three E's as we call it, uh, projects that are educational in nature, uh, focus on economic development or the environment. So um, could I just get a confirmation that you are viewing my screen with the application materials? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I've scrolled to page two of the document that Chris Dahl um, forwarded to you some time ago. Um, he uploaded these items to a SkyDrive account and shared a link with you. Um, on your screen right now, you should be viewing a table that captures a summary of the internal project proposals for 2022. Uh, we have a total of seven Kane County offices that are proposing a grand total of 14 different programs. Um, these really run the gamut, everything from the top of the list, tuition reimbursement uh, for Kane County employees, uh, down to the bottom of the list, uh, environmental management proposing uh, a robust recycling program for the new year. Um, in this table, uh, you can see that in the first column, uh, there are individual fund numbers established. That's because each of these programs represent a special initiative um, for which the county has secured external funding and perhaps also a riverboat funding as well. And these funds are kept separate. Uh, each department manages these funds individually on their own, but the dollars that are put in the fund are, are kept separate from the general revenue generally. Um, so we provided to you a summary of the uh, different offices that are involved, the project names, program names, and then right in the center of the column, you can see that we have secured from the departments their projection of how much uh, cash they will have at the end of the current fiscal year. So these different accounts 
um, are where they manage the funds that support their programs. And the departments are collectively um, reporting to you that on November 30th of this year, which represents the end of the current fiscal year, um, they will have just over $452,000 in unobligated funds that they'll start the year with. Now, on the right-hand side of the screen, what you can see is a summary of their request for the new fiscal year. And the departments are basically asking for permission to use a combination of the surplus or the cash that they have on hand at the end of the year, along with new money from you. And so the center column in the right-hand side of the screen represents the request that's being made at this time for you to allocate additional funding for these departments, for these programs to support their efforts in fiscal year 2022. And as you can see, uh, the request for the new year uh, represents just over $3.1 million. Um, these are projects that have been supported over the over many years. Um, we've not included or invited new projects to the table. Um, that, in essence, is because, as you know, um, the Riverboat Fund has seen diminishing uh, revenue over uh, multiple years. Um, and that takes me really to our year-over-year -year, uh, summary for you. So now you should be looking at a table that we've also provided to you previously that captures a fiscal year 2021 snapshot alongside fiscal year 2022 requested funds. And what Tracy has done here for you is give you a snapshot of how the current requests compare with the most recently approved funding for these programs. And as you can see, uh, for fiscal year 2021, uh, the departments were given permission to use about $810,000 that they already had possession of. And the committee last year awarded an additional $2.1 million in new funding for the different projects. And so for fiscal year 2021, again, I'm looking at this section of the table that I'm highlighting. I think you can see the blue highlight that I just added to fiscal year 2021. Um, so for fiscal year 2021, again, we're halfway through that year right now, um, the departments collectively are implementing uh, programs that cost just shy of $3 million. Now for fiscal year 2022, uh, the departments collectively are proposing activities and projects that have a total price tag of $3.2 million. So that does represent an overall increase in funding uh, when you consider the cost of these programs year to year to year. Um, so this gives you a, a line item by line item summary of what each department has received approval of last year uh, for the current fiscal year and what they're requesting for the new fiscal year. And then in the right-hand side of your screen, you can see that difference is called out. Um, and what we see here is that uh, eight of the uh, activities, eight of the programs are, are gonna see an increase. The departments are asking for an increase in funding. Um, and then two of the programs, uh, specifically the cost share drainage program and the recycling program, are proposing a slightly scaled back effort for fiscal year 2022. So this gives you kind of a historical snapshot. Um, I'm getting a little bit of feedback here on my computer. So maybe uh, folks that aren't talking could maybe mute their microphone at this time. Um, so this gives you a summary a year over year. Are there any questions before I proceed? Uh, Scott, this is uh, Bill Leonard. I've got a question for you. Okay. Uh, Scott, in looking at the unobligated funds on the uh, slide before, um, those are not allocated in any way. So those are totally free funds that can be used in 22? You are correct. And so I just changed to the previous slide 
And that center column identifies, and again, these are numbers that came directly from the departments. They've reported to us that collectively they have just over $450,000 um, projected to be on hand and unobligated on November 30th. And then collectively, the departments are proposing to use $102,500 of that fund balance. Okay, so they're only uh, suggesting using 102000 of the 452000 is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and the total request is three million two hundred twenty-nine thousand seven hundred forty-two. That is correct. Okay, and then Scott, I I saw the other slide, but what do we have available from funds requested after the external grants um, from the River Vote for twenty twenty-two? Was it about a million four? I'm sorry. The question again, please. Uh, Scott, I was wondering with the funds that we received in April of this year um, to distribute to both the external and internal, what do we have left for internal uh, grants? So what I can do is I can jump, I can jump to our draft budget document, which we've also shared with you. Yes. I'm not sure if this answers your question, Mr. Leonard, but what we've done here, and I can ask Tracy to kind of walk you through this. We've drafted a budget for fiscal year 2022 that simply relies on our most recent deposit of federal of uh, riverboat funds from the casino. And that figure is just over $1.9 million. That's the figure that we received in April from the casino. And then how much did we give to the external grants again? So um, what Tracy has done here is craft a budget that provides $391,000 for the external program and $1.4 million for the internal program. And this is consistent with a 21.79% split, which is historically what the county board has approved. Basically one fifth of your grant making is to external entities, nonprofit organizations, and four fifths of your grant making has historically been to county departments. Okay, thank you, Scott. I, I won't have any other questions for a while. I'll just listen. So, um, okay, so I'm glad that answers your question for now. Um, back to our year over year comparison, I wanna just highlight that one of the other documents that we've prepared for you and for your review is a fund by fund um, explanation of the differences between fiscal year 2021 and proposed numbers for fiscal year 2022. So on your screen now, you should be seeing that comparison, an explanation of the differences. So uh, Tracy has prepared this information for you. Each fund highlighted, uh, the total amount of increase or decrease is noted and highlighted. Um, and then she has broken down for you kind of an explanation for what accounts for those differences. Again, just to repeat what I said earlier, most of the changes represent increases. So for example, for Fund 220, the state's attorney's office Title IV-D program, you can see there's an increase, a proposed increase of $237,904. Uh, she's explaining uh, that the, the expenses in that program have increased for fiscal year 2022. And she's given you a breakdown of what those increases are. Um, I won't go through all these individually. Uh, we would invite you to review these items and ask us any questions that you might have. Um, this is just simply an accounting and a breakdown of what those differences, what constitutes the differences between the department's current fiscal year and their proposed 2022 fiscal year. So that's also a document that you should have. So the purpose of today's meeting is to really give you an opportunity to ask questions um, of us. And then we also want to ask you, um, you know, how you'd like to proceed. Um, we uh, historically have invited the departments to uh, come before you and, and answer any questions that you might have um, after you've had a chance to review their requests and analyze them. 
And then uh, based on our practice from last year and consistent with what you just did for the external program for fiscal year 2021, we'd like to give you a worksheet and invite each of you to fill that out as if you are making the decisions on behalf of the county. And then Chris Dahl can collect those from you and average those figures and give those back to you as the basis of your deliberations going forward. So do you have any questions of us at this time? Excuse me, Scott, this is uh, Bill Leonard again. I do have uh, one question with respect to the request. I see that they're all very, you know, justifiable and necessary requests and needs. What I'm wondering is with the American Rescue Plan, if we can't do some additional funding for these needs through them and lessen the load that we have on the Riverboat Grant requirements. I, I think that would probably be a question primarily for um, the finance department. I believe they're working through, um, you know, what expenses the county can claim under that program. There may be an opportunity to um, use those funds in that way. Okay, thank you. I guess the last piece that we'd like to explain, and Tracy, I'll ask you to maybe walk us through this, is that we do have a fund balance that we, I, we like to consider a bit of a reserve. Um, it has been dwindling in recent years, and we've reported that to the committee over time. Um, I know most of the members of the committee are new this year, um, but Bill Leonard can attest to the fact that we've, you know, pretty consistently talked with the committee about the reserve, the reserve amount and what its status is. At the bottom of your screen uh, that I'm sharing, um, you can see that we've given you a snapshot of what we expect the fund balance to be on November 30th. Tracy, can you kind of walk us through what, what, makes, what, what that fund balance is made up of? The fund balance is made up of previous money received from the Grand Victoria Riverboat that um, has not been utilized or um, in the case of externals, some of them don't need all of the money that they're awarded. And so that money is returned and is used in sub subsequent years. Um, so it's made up of, of quite a bit of different things over the years. Um, but it is money that is not obligated for anything currently and is available as a reserve amount that to be used um, if the committee chooses on their fiscal year 2022 budget. So in essence, that fund balance that we're projecting for November 30th is, as Tracy's provided you a breakout, it's basically two numbers. Um, the 1.946 million represents the most recent deposit of um, riverboat funds from the casino. Obviously, we've taken that number and moved that up into the revenue side of the budget. That's where that 1.9 million comes from. Then, um, as she just explained, the balance of the reserve, um, it totals $3.3 million. So um, you are able to use um, those dollars to supplement your budget. Um, we would just warn you that, um, you know, that fund balance, that reserve is dwindling and, um, you know, the, the scale of the program uh, is not uh, supported with new revenue that's coming in from the casino. So we're, we're spending more money than we're taking in is basically what this comes down to. Scott, this is uh, Bill Leonard again. Uh, with respect to the um, fund balance, the previous funds not used, which I believe you said are about 3.3 million. Could you give the rest of the committee a little bit of a her historical perspective on what amounts have been taken out of that each of the last, you know, one, two, three, four, five years? Uh, we can certainly gather those numbers and give them to you. I don't have them off the top of my head. I will tell you that my office um, began managing this program on behalf of the board um, a decade ago or so. And um, when we assumed management of the program, the reserve 
uh, was in the, it was in like the teens. It was uh, probably about four or five times what it is right now. So over the decade that we've managed this, um, the board has drained the reserve uh, slowly over time. Not every year necessarily, but over time, the, the fund balance has dwindled. This is the, this is the lowest that we've seen. Yeah, you know, I think that's really a good point, Scott. And if you could supply to the committee members, uh, including myself, what amounts have been taken out of that over the last five years, I think that would give us a good perspective to look at what's happened in the past and how we might want to either use uh, less or more of that fund this year. Absolutely, we're happy to do that. Say, Thank Bill, you. Bill, this is Chris. Um, Caius, say, yes, uh, can you give, as a past uh, board or a committee member, can you give us some perspective on the reasoning behind drawing it down or not drawing it down at, in any particular year? Not the, not the figures themselves necessarily, but uh, was there something particularly needy one year uh, or in need of funding or, uh, you know, the, the strategy that we maybe would want to apply this year as to whether we want to draw it down or not? Well, you know, Chris, that's really a good question. I don't know that I can answer that totally, but I will tell you over the last four years or so that I've been on the committee, we've been uh, very concerned about depleting that uh, fund balance because if we do that, then we will only have the money that we receive from the river boats every year. So I think it's very important that, um, you know, we try to be careful in using that fund balance as much as possible. If there are no other options, uh, then maybe we have to take monies out of there. But I, I think over the last four years under John Hoshite's leadership, um, we tried to be very careful taking anything out of there, although we did take money out. I can't remember the specific reasons, but I do know that, um, you know, in our situation today, we have requests um, that are you know, a million dollars more than what we have. And uh, so we'll have to look at that. And I think if we historically get the numbers from Scott about what we've done over the last uh, four or five years, that will give us a better idea of maybe what we want to look at this year. No, no uh, insight on holding the uh, millions of dollars to help bolster the fund by interest versus maybe what we'd be getting nowadays is we would probably be getting zero interest or near zero interest just by holding the money. Yeah. You know, I think Chris, uh, right now, if you take a look at our other funds, we're getting in anywhere from 0.39% to 0.9% on our monies. And um, the longer you agree to lock it up, the higher rate you get, but it is minimal. I'd say probably on the average, we're looking at one half of 1%. So that may not be a priority at this point. Yeah, because of, um, at, at that rate, you're losing money just on the rate of inflation, mm -hmm. probably. Well, yeah, depending upon where uh, the CPI Real, is, that's correct. Real dollar value. Okay, thank you. All of these uh, documents you provided, and particularly this one, uh, uh, Scott, is a uh, PDF file. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, Chris yeah. Adal uploaded these to a website that we emailed to you. Right. Um, we're happy to share these documents separately with you by email. Um, I will tell you that the one that contains the applications from the departments is a really large document. And so that's the reason that we uploaded these to a, a SkyDrive account. Um, what I would encourage the committee to do <clears throat> is individually to go through these requests one by one, uh, you know, just to pick out kind of the, the sore thumb in the group. Um, the Child Advocacy Center is basically telling you that although the current fiscal year was supported with a $628,000 budget um, for fiscal year 2021, they're basically reporting to you now that that budget is just shy of a million dollars. And so, you know, as staff, 
you know, we view all these different projects and we, we value all these projects and programs and recognize that they all, you know, benefit our constituents and are, are certainly worthy of consideration. But, you know, to be honest with you, as we look at these requests, you know, we are concerned for you because, you know, these increases, um, you know, typically don't go away. I mean, if this is an increase of $335,000 in funding over one year, you know, you can kind of expect that that's not going to go away for fiscal year 2023. And so um, as you review these requests, I guess we would encourage you to really ask yourself, you know, are these items things that you want to continue to support with riverboat funds? And the reality is that, you know, we've been saying this for years and years, and so we're kind of blue in the face. But you know, at some point here, the riverboat fund is probably not going to be able to support all these projects. So, you know, rather than hit the wall and, and go from feast to famine in one year, you know, I think it's worth your time to consider whether or not, you know, each of these individual requests, you know, really does warrant approval or if it's more, if it's a time for, for scaling back and curbing uh, some of these increased costs because be mindful that they are going to be recurring they're going to be coming back to you on an annual basis for consideration so again that's why i think historically the committee has has called the departments together uh, in a meeting uh, for the purpose of really drilling down on um, project by project and getting down to what exactly you view as is critical and worthy of funding Scott, uh, this is Bill Leonard. I just want to say, I think your points are really well made. And I think the, the thing that generally speaking, we have to look at is how much the riverboat funding is going down every year and how much these are expenses are increasing every year proportionally. Um, there's, a, there's a big discrepancy there. So I think what we have to do is take a look at how much our funds have gone down and then apply that on a proportional basis or a percentage basis to the needs of the different people um, and realize, as Scott had said, these are ongoing and they get greater every year. So uh, we really need to start making some of these um, departments aware of the fact that this isn't gonna go on uh, much longer. It could go on another five years, um, but it's not something that's gonna go on forever. So great point you made there, Scott. Thanks, Bill. Does uh, now you had mentioned in our external uh, application of money, we had the three E's to sort of guide us in a direction that was uh, compatible with the with the past history on on uh, organizations that fit in with the environment, education, or economy. Uh, did you mention earlier that 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 has been typically what the uh, committee has applied to the internal? Um, uh, those those are the overarching well. program, and and that's part of the charge that that uh, is covered in our agreement with the Elgin Riverboat Resort. Um, in the case of the internal projects for for the county, um, I would say the envelope has been stretched somewhat. Um, so all these programs and projects you know, in some way, shape or form, you know, address the three E's um, and our educational, environmental or economic development in nature. Some obviously are like spot on, you know, uh, consistent, for example, the recycling program clearly, you know, focuses on the environment, clearly, that's not, not even questionable. You know, something like tuition reimbursement obviously is educational, the program is aimed at helping Kane County employees uh, improve their themselves through educational opportunities. Um, economic development, you know, by its name is obviously economic development. So some are more clearly aligned with those three E's than others, but they've all been determined eligible by the county board. What's, what's the item cost share drainage? So that's a project or a program that is sponsored by the Water Resources Department. And these dollars are used as matching grant funds uh, as the uh, department provides drainage assistance, drainage improvements, 
in areas of the county that are prone to flooding and have some uh, stormwater issues. Um, Jody Walnick is the department head, obviously, for water resources. And as she has run this program for many years, um, addressing stormwater um, needs in the county. And web tech services? Uh, that's a program uh, sponsored by the IT department. And these dollars are used to support um, various goods and services that are needed for the county to have a website, uh, enhance the website, and provide uh, technical support for that website. So this has been deemed an educational program that uh, aims to provide information about the county's business to the public through the web. Okay, and, and this, I'm assuming, actually this is probably all well described in the, uh, in our list, uh, our applications as well, although in much, much, much more detail. Yeah, that's right. Each department um, was asked to complete an application form. They actually did two, there's two components to the request. In your application packet, um, what you'll find is um, a narrative uh, request from the department. Each department has summarized the mid-year status of their current fiscal year activities, and they've uh, detailed what they're requesting for the new fiscal year starting on December 1. And then to complement that uh, material, we have um, obtained copies of their proposed budgets. So each of these special revenue funds has an individual budget with revenue and expenses. And those have been entered in the New World Budget Module. And um, actually later today, in about an hour, um, we believe you know, your, the, the full county board will meet as a committee of the whole um, be, beginning today for the purposes of hearing from each department regarding their budget request for the new year. And so, you know, they may not highlight this unnecessarily uh, strongly. They've been given just a few minutes to present their budgets, but these uh, seven departments will include in their budget presentations to the full county board, um, the component that involves the use of remote funds. Um, the committee in the past though, has called the departments together to specifically focus in on their riverboat supported activities. So we're happy to schedule that meeting for you at your convenience um, in the next several weeks, if that's something that would be of interest to you. And that deadline wise, we're looking at, you gave us a schedule earlier. I can't seem to find it in my notes for uh, what we're looking for, for a finished product with this committee. Well, we're hoping to wrap things up by the end of the month. And that way, um, the, the budget for the Riverboat Fund, which is Fund 120, um, can go, can be submitted and go to the full county board for consideration. I believe you're, um, you'll be putting the budget on, on uh, public display, I think, in sometime in October, and then taking final action on the budget in November, I believe. Okay, thank you. Can, can we get a, uh, just a spreadsheet instead of the PDF, can you, uh, this uh, particular chart you're showing there, can we get that in an Excel file just so we can play with the numbers in there? To... We absolutely can do that. And then at this time, I think I would invite Chris to share his screen. He's gonna walk you through um, the, the worksheet that I made reference to earlier. Uh, we've not distributed this document to you yet, but we will do so um, yet today. Um, and so Chris is now sharing um, that spreadsheet with you. Chris, can you walk us through what these columns are? Yes, uh, I had to unmute, sorry. Um, so if you look on the left, this is very similar to what Scott showed you before. Um, the blue area is the budget request according to the different departmental applications, what they're requesting for use of cash on hand versus new riverboat funds requested, and then a total. And then the green area, we're asking you to put in your recommendation, whether it's 
uh, use of cash on hand or new riverboat funds based on what they're asking for. And then that will tally up. And once I get that from everyone, I will do an average tally. And that will give you kind of the uh, committee's recommendation for each of those departmental requests and, and a total as well. So again, we wanna just emphasize, this is a little unusual. I know that uh, you as county board members are not you know, normally doing this kind of budget work individually, but as Chris just detailed, you know, these departments have requested a combination of permission to use the money you've already given them in years past that they have not expended and new money that they're asking you to approve um, for transfer in December to them to support their fiscal year 22, 2022 uh, spending plan. And so, you know, back to uh, Mr. Leonard's point earlier, you know, this spreadsheet does capture the two things that he noted um, in column D, you know, Chris is providing you a, a, a tally of the unobligated fund balances that the departments have, have projected that they will have on November 30th at the end of the current fiscal year. And then the next column over in column F, you know, they, they're requesting to use some of those funds in the new year. So what that really means, let me just I, let me just go uh, zero in on say domestic violence, state's attorney's office, not to pick on them. But what this is basically telling you is that that department expects to have $160,000 of unobligated funds. Those are funds that aren't attached to any spending plan for um, as of the end of this fiscal year. And what they're communicating to you with their budget request for fiscal year 2022 is that they intend to save those dollars and not spend them in the new year. So in the past, the committee has looked at that and said, well, you know, we're gonna want you to spend your old money first before we give you more new money. So the committee has historically over the last several years um, focused in on the uh, unobligated fund balances that are expected to be available and really driven home the point that county departments should spend down their existing funds before they ask for new funds. Now, several years ago, the unobligated fund balances were much larger. Now they're not so big. Um, I zeroed in on the largest of the, of the amounts uh, with Fund 223. But as you can see, there are other programs that are expecting to have fund balances uh, at the end of the current fiscal year. Question. Ford. Are those fund balances, those existing balances related to that program or just overall? So these numbers in column D um, that Chris has highlighted for you, these represent, this represents the amount of money that each department expects they will have in their special revenue fund. Special revenue funds, okay. You could call it surplus money. You could say, you could view this as cash that you approved uh, and you transferred to them in previous years that they did not spend. So in the, in the case of uh, Fund 120, um, 59,000, they're requesting to use 50,000. That's correct. So and they're not asking any additional money, so they're gonna spend the 50,000 their total request is 50,000. That doesn't come out of our 1.9 million. That's already, that's on it. That, that comes from a different source than the 1.9. So what that is, is a prior year allocation right. that uh, we still have on hand. And uh, that, that's an example of a program that has been supported by the county board. The county board has approved uh, allocating funds for that program, but they have not been spent. And so, you know, just to zero in on that item for a minute, um, up there, there's apparently just shy of, of $60,000 that has been approved for tuition reimbursement expenses that has not been expended. And um, the, 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 the HR department is proposing to use 50,000 of that in the new fiscal year. 
and that'll leave, if they do use that $50,000, then that'll leave just shy of $10,000 available for 2023. Whereas, well, let's see, I'll pick the next one down, right. Whereas uh, fund number that has an ample amount or what appears to be an ample amount that you're, you had you pointed out domestic violence has 160,000. They're not asking to use any of that. They're just gonna carry it over, which, which is just exactly what you said, right? Correct. Yeah, they're asking for another 334. The 334 comes out of the 1.9 million from this year or the reserves or the 1.9 million this year and or the uh, reserve of 3.3 million? That is correct. So we have a, a uh, potential, each of the individuals that is allocating this has a potential of uh, allocating money from the 1.9. And if we wanted to add much more to it, we would take it out of the 3.3 million. That's correct. We would draw down part of that reserve to cover the expenses. And, and just to you know, talk further about that program. So as you review these, these documents that we've given you, you know, you kind of need to use, I think you need to use these documents side by side. So, right. so you know, as you just said, uh, that program is saying I need $334,000 in new money to support my activities for fiscal year 2020. One, uh, 22. And if you look at the other document that gives you a year over year history, um, right now in the current fiscal year, that program is being supported to the tune of a total allocation of $257,000. So between 2021, our current fiscal year, and the proposal for 2022, that program is costing you um, $257,000 this year and proposed to cost you $334,000 next year. So that represents a pretty good increase. Um, and because that program is overwhelmingly an operational program, meaning these funds are used to pay for county expenses that are, that are incurred to deliver that program to the public, um, you can expect that those expenses are not gonna go away. So, you know, we're, we're seeing programs scaling up and increasing in cost at the very time that you folks are, are faced with the challenge of depleted resources or rapidly depleting resources. We have a depleting income and then if we were to carry their request forward, it would mean we would deplete as well our reserves of 3.3 million. Correct. Correct. So, you know, just to cut to the chase here, you know, it's, we're not too far away from you guys having to make some very difficult decisions about who to eliminate from this table or who to slash. Um, and so that, that gets pretty serious pretty quick, especially as you, you know, focus on challenge, uh, the, the quandary of addressing environmental issues versus public service. Uh, items that are needed to uh, support vulnerable populations. Um, you've got some difficult decisions to make in the future, um, as well as today, as well as at the moment. Uh, today. I think it's it's coming pretty fast. We could spend That's all three point three million, just about the whole thing. Well, I guess all of our reserves and keep the one point nine million as reserves. This is hypothetical, of course. That if if we were to to uh, the total request of 3.29, 3.2 million would take our entire reserves and then we would use the 1.9 as hypothetically as the reserve, we'd have a 1.9 as reserves. That would be on the far end if we funded everything that's requested. But, Mr. Chairman, but if I read this right, we, we get to make two recommendations. One is we, could, we can recommend their use of a uh, cash on hand and then we recommend how much a riverboat funding that we could take out. So it's the current riverboat funding, cur current ri riverboat funding. Yeah. Right. So this is to me, this is a little bit easier than the last layout because only one fund things is coming out of. Yeah. 
they try to fill the request. Well, and then, but then you have the third, you have the, we can re request in item one, they, the, uh, or the column F, we can say, okay, spend that money first. Then we add the new riverboat funds requested. Right, that's what I'm saying, yes. But we can also thirdly supplement their request with portion of the 3.3 million we have in reserves, which has been done occasionally or frequently in the past, uh, yes. depending on what the committee thought was important, I guess, or in some cases you might want to hold on to it if you were making really good interest rate. Well, because you would make hundreds of thousands a year, I, but now we're not. Yeah, to me, the uh, to me the reserves is a whole nother uh, conversation. Uh, my time I've spent on the board before and present, I've never been completely happy with the percentage of the reserves we have based on our total um, our total budget. I think the percentage that we have in reserve is quite small. Is that in the general fund or in this particular? In, in all our, a lot of our funds. Okay. So, yeah. Well, how about in this one in particular? We, well, we our reserve is almost fifty percent more than what our, what we have to spend. Three point three million is in reserve. We have one point nine million that's coming in that that would be uh, income this year. Right. Well, I think we just need to be careful how much of that we just spend down and not, you know. And why is that? I, I, we've had in the last 12 years, we had two big financial emergencies, you know, uh, one in 2009 and now in uh, 2019 with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So our 2020, however you want to see it. So I just believe to keep things running that, and we never know what's going to happen with the riverboat funds. They, they could pick up that we need to be more cautious about how we see our, our reserves. Well, I, I agree. We need to see, I want to understand why we have to be more cautious. Because we've had two. And one of them is right now. Right now, right. So right. that's why we've been saving it is for one of those times, which is right now. It's raining. So if, yeah, it, and it's, I agree that it's, it's raining, raining for a year. But it might rain again in five years, it might rain again in three years. But it's raining now. Right. If you're drowning now, you're going to drown you won't be able to round in five years to drown. <laughs> and if with so I'm just trying to understand the logic. I don't think no. it's uh, your your point of, of view is, is well taken. Yeah. Uh, that the res, that I think in, it's good to have a reserve. The question is the application of the Percentage timing. Of, how, how much of how much it we use? If right. we're we I'm want not to keep, saying don't use it. What I'm saying we need to be cautious how much right. of it we do use. And I'm just bringing this up hypothetically so we can get it out and have it discussed instead of coming at the last minute. Work work through all of our. Uh, figures of, okay, we've got this much to spend, and we're going to ask them to spend the money they've got on hand, and then we all decided. Then we go, well, well, what about the three million? Maybe we can give somebody more. Is that, or maybe that's the way we want to go about it? I'm not sure. Do we want to adopt all of them at the same time, or because each one of us is going to have to make the decision as we work on it? Uh, and I'm not sure how that applies when we, if we, if we take each 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 one of us takes our worksheet and works on it, we should have the same parameters, uh, uh, whether we want to uh, use this and, and just call this putting the money this year toward it or money and reserve so we all understand what we're doing at the end. Now, which column are we gonna use to show that we're using the reserve funds that well, we decided? See, I don't see, uh, well, that would be also in column N, I believe, is that right, Mr. Dahl, or? Uh, yeah. We don't really have a, column for reserves. We were just looking at use of cash on hand and new riverboat funds. Right. So basically the way the way we would view this, so you know, I, I presented to you, I shared with you the draft budget that Tracy prepared for fund 120, the riverboat fund. And if you think back to that document, you know, based on historical budgeting uh, and the split between external and internal uh, grant making, you know, we have a draft budget that if you were to want to recommend it, would provide $1.4 million for internal projects. So as you all take this spreadsheet and fill it out, what I would suggest to you is that if you fill out column N and, it, and that column N exceeds $1.4 million, what you're basically telling us is that the amount that you go over 1.4 million 
is the amount you want to take out of the reserve. Can we go yes. back to that? Yes. Uh, can we go back? Or actually, go ahead. If, if there's any questions about that. I, I understand that. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Can we can we see that other table that, that you had as a perspective budget? Uh, let me share my screen with you and toggle over to that document. Um, I believe this is what you're looking at or this is what you're interested in. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm trying to interpret that. So that's, is that the one? Yeah, so this is a draft budget that captures, uh, well, it's, it's, for your, it's for your consideration. Right. Um, but what we've done is basically crafted a draft budget that follows some principles that the committee has historically followed. Again, it's not in stone, but we're just trying to kind of be consistent with what, what direction we've been given as staff from the committee. And so the direction that we have is that we should base our, our new fiscal year budget on the most recently received allocation of riverboat funds. And so that's where the 1.946 million comes from. That's the actual amount of money the casino gave the county in April. So because that's cash in hand in our hands, we use that as the basis for our budget going forward because it's real money that we know we have. We don't have to speculate on whether or not we're gonna get it. We know that it came in from the casino. Then Tracy has estimated the amount of interest revenue that Fund 120 will see in the new year. And then of course, consistent with this um, tuition reimbursement program, you know, we've, we've set aside $50,000 from cash on hand because that's been allocated previously by the committee and um, the department has requested 50,000 for tuition reimbursement. So that's contained here in the revenue side. So that gets us to a $2.02 .02 million revenue budget for the new year. And then on the expense side of the equation, we've captured the operating costs that our office incurs to run this program um, and then we've taken the balance of the funds and we've split them in roughly a uh, 19, or I'm sorry, 21%, 79% division between external and internal activities. So that's why you see the, my highlighting is not working so well here. That's why you see the asterisk here that these amounts are based on um, this historical record of using about one fifth of the funds for external grant making and four fifths of the funds for internal grant making. So if you, if you collectively recommend allocating more than $1.473 million in new money for these internal projects, we will plus up this expense item and make a corresponding increase to this revenue item so that our revenue and our expenses balance. And the, the I'm sorry, the $50,000 was from, was that from the tuition, did you say? Correct. It just carried over? That's correct. So you can see here, Tracy has indicated that we would use $50,000 in cash on hand that we have in fund 120. And that would be offset by an expense of $50,000 for tuition reimbursement and employee training sponsored by the HR department. And so we have 1.473, not 1 1.9, because we've already spent the three, three, 391,000 in our first external grant exercise. Yeah, so this draft budget would basically, if you approve, if the county board approves this draft budget, then next winter, we would announce publicly that you're considering applications from nonprofits and units of local government for external grants of not more than $391,822. So keep in mind, historically, this number has been around a million and it's been scaled back as the revenue has declined, as the casino proceeds have declined, everything about this program has kind of been scaled back over time. I guess I just had an oh my that we the the figures we were working with earlier in round one was from last year carryover is that correct? That's correct. Your to recent be spent meeting. this year. 
you know, the <clears throat> recent meetings have been to deliberate over how to allocate money that was approved by the county board for use on external grants last November. Mm. And <clears throat> I guess the interest figures that the 24,000 I calculate is a 1.2%. One, one, we would get 1.2% on the money of the 1.9 million over the next year. Well, I believe that interest revenue is a calculation based on the fund balance. So, um, you know, keep in mind in fund 120, we're carrying around you know, it looks like as, as of the end of this year, we'll be carrying around 3.3 million in surplus funds. Oh, I see. Okay. That's, what so we, not the that's what we characterize as the reserve, <clears throat> so to speak. Right. Okay. So just to put this kind of in blunt terms, you know, you've, this draft budget provides $1.4 million for internal projects. And I think the number you have received requests from the departments for $3.1 million in new funding. So if you were to take, say, roughly half of your reserve and, and give us approval to spend it next year, that would leave you with a reserve of, of about $1.5 million. And then if you didn't receive an increase in revenue from the casino, which is to say if the casino continues to see um, less business as, you know, a, as it has in the last year, then you would be able to continue your spending for maybe one more year. And then we would hit a wall where we wouldn't have any reserve left to draw on and it would get real pretty quick. And you'd be faced with the challenge of whether or not you can make grants to external entities, to nonprofit organizations, and you'd be faced with the challenge of which departments in the county structure are you gonna defund going forward? That's just putting it pretty bluntly for you. Right, or we could choose to drop some right now and uh, put that other fund in, and not run it down. Correct. So like Correct, and that's all why, tough choices. All tough. Yeah, they're, they're we want more money, Scott. Can you get us more money? They're, we, well, you all need to go to the casino and gamble more. Is the only answer <laughs> I have go. for you. Have you been down there gambling for us? <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, so this is why we we are mindful of drawing your attention to the the requests that constitute increases, because in most cases. You know, these are increases that if they're granted are not going to go away. You know, that forms the new um, uh, base request for years going forward. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's sobering to think about, you know, um, organizations that come to depend on this money. You know, our staff consistently communicates to grantees you know, look, don't depend on this for your operating support yeah. because it's not a dependable revenue source. And this is why we say that because we do see, you know, we do see the light at the end of the tunnel sure. and, and it's right. a locomotive headed right at us, so. Okay, well, it's, all right. Well, I think I've got a grasp on what's going on, um, at least for myself. Is there any other questions for any of the members of the committee? Not at all, uh, well, not for me, but uh, this is where I make my statement that, um, you know, one of the one of the detergent deterrent on the uh, riverboat funds is a video gaming that we was pushed to agree to, and now the funds we don't get much from it, and is only geared towards us doing infrastructure, which is not enough there to do infrastructure with. So I'm wondering if whether or not we should take a look at those funds and see the, is there some way we can apply part of it to this to try to make up for that difference. I'm not sure that's in our purview here at this committee. Not, I just a statement I, I, that I just want to make. I appreciate your point of view, Mr. Right. Ford. <laughs> Ms. Strathman, did you have a comment or question? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I understand that the amount from the riverboat went down last year. Uh, what percentage historically has it gone down annually? 
Uh, it's been all over the place. I will tell you that um, at its height, um, you received over $12 million a year yes. from the casino. Um, and obviously, you know, this year 1.9, I believe represents the smallest annual allocation or, or deposit that you've ever received. But it has been steadily de decreasing over the years. Yes, it has. And when we go back over the, and we can supply you with the uh, track record, I'm happy to email that to you and show you the numbers. Um, you know, historically you've received a lot of money from this one business. I think it's like 140 something million dollars that you've received from one single uh, business entity, the casino in Elgin. Yeah. Um, and when you look at that history, uh, it's interesting because you can sort of identify that when the state of Illinois banned indoor smoking, the casinos all saw a decline in business. Um, at one point, the state of Illinois recalculated its taxation of uh, gaming businesses, and they took a larger share of the net operating income. And so, you know, as those changes have been made, it's resulted in the net operating income reducing over time. And your your funding in this program is based on seven and a half percent of the casino's net operating income. So net operating income is the income that they have after they cover their expenses and pay taxes. Thank you. Don't you wish you were on the committee 10, 12 years ago? Yes, yes I, I want that, do. I want that $12 million <laughs> committee. Yeah. I don't want that $1.9 million one. I'm no kidding. Um, well, in those years, the county board did not fully utilize the, the revenue. Right. And, we could, and that's where the fund balance began to accumulate. Right. Um, and I don't, I don't know that that was the intent to create a rainy day fund, but um, we're, we're fortunate that those funds were not fully spent. Otherwise, you know, this would be a, a very difficult year to budget in. Well, it will be soon enough, and maybe this is the year. I'm not sure. So in the time of a drought, it's raining. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. So uh, 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 be that as may, is there anyone else on the committee that has a question about this? Does, uh, is there, and then I want to, because we're getting closer to uh, the time that we're going to be have another meeting in here. What else do we need to uh, cover uh, during this meeting that you'd like to dispense to us or that we, because we're just listening and asking at correct. this point, is that correct? And have we listened enough and asked enough? Or well, we want you to know that we're here to answer any questions that you might have individually. Um, you're all welcome to give us a, a Chris, Tracy, or myself a call anytime, and we'll be happy to unpack any of these line items for you and get into detail and minutia. Um, we also want to remind you, though, that if you want to ask questions of the individual departments regarding their program, regarding their request, regarding their increases, regarding, you know, what's changing about their program and why, you know, they're asking for more money, um, we need to hear from you and, and, and get a time on the calendar that those departments can be notified to come in and, and be basically interviewed by you. Okay. Um, if that's something you don't want to do, then we will uh, certainly go ahead and give you our worksheet document and invite you to begin to uh, fill that out. Um, and then we'll schedule a meeting of the committee for you to reconvene and review the average numbers that you come up with as a group. Okay. What's our timeline? To the end of the month. To finish, right? Wasn't that right, Scott? Correct. We're hoping to get this so done sometime in the July. It's going to be a fun month. Yeah. The um, so um, is it? Do we have a consensus or a, a, of whether we want to to hold a meeting where we invite the uh, um, applicants in to question them out of particular items, or do we want to decide at this time, or do we want to? Uh, it now decide that we want to do it in Mr. right Chairman, now Mr. I'd, I'd like to keep the op that option open at oh. this time I haven't looked over it in in detail enough to know okay. but I'd like to not make the decision that we wouldn't see them okay uh, in case we want to ask them some questions about it. okay that Mr. Kais if I can suggest that committee members uh, let you know 
uh, what their preference is going forward. We don't need to schedule anything today. And then we'll stay in close contact with you and um, plan that. If there is a desire for a meeting, we'll certainly accommodate that and get that on the calendar. Okay. That would be great. Then that works for the, everybody in the room I'm here? comfortable either way. Either way? Okay. Let's go ahead and work on the, the, the spreadsheet. And then if I got any questions, I call the departments. Will you be providing the spreadsheet now then or? Chris will be, Chris Dahl will be emailing that to you shortly. Okay. Yes. And then uh, Mr. Leonard, are you still there? Oh, I think he's he dropped off here. the call. Oh, we're here for the other meeting. Okay. Well, he's, he's had experience with this as well before, so I'm not as concerned with his uh, grasping the, the minutia details of this particular procedure. Um, so then if there are no other questions from anyone here and you have nothing else to depart to us today, Mr. Dahl or Mr. Berger? Uh, no, I'll get that those items to you as soon as I can, though. Okay. Well, we have all month, so we'll by sometime before the 28th or so. <laughs> so we we'll operate around here. We'll give you the worksheet document. Right. We'll I'll get that share. worksheet. The too. worksheet document and also that spreadsheet. If I could get that, I'd like to see that uh, larger spreadsheet in a uh, Excel file. Whether sure. you just put it up and I download it, that's fine. We will do okay. that. And we'll also share with you the funding history of this program going back to I have to a, a little better. Uh, that would be good too. I can. Uh, work better with figures if I can just play with them. I'll, I'll copy my own copy of it and then play with it and see if it helps make more sense what I'm concentrating on trying to get done. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much for your That's time just, today. Okay. You thank, you, thank you, gentlemen. To get those items from us. Thank you for your right. patience. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Thanks. Thanks in the, for the first round and now thanks in advance for the second round. For your patience. I think. And your education. <laughs> Okay, then, so uh, hearing no, that we need no other business, can I entertain a, a motion some, to adjourn? Motion to adjourn, Berg, Furman, second, Ford. All in favor? Aye. 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 Tepe says yes.